Okay, thank you very much for your uh, assistance. I see you're numerous <laughs> this morning. So the, uh, the title of the presentation is Estimating the Permeability of Barrier Polymers for Chemical uh, Warfare Agents. And so this, uh, so I'll just move on to the next one. So the table of content of this presentation will be first introduction for a uh, background information, experimental evaluation, then talking about the numerical experiment that we do for this and also for a correction factors to correct the, uh, what we're, we're going to discuss with before we, we conclude. So just to remind you, okay, and then although this is, uh, you know, a wish of people, we know that war and things like that exist, but the most point is the use of chemical weapon, okay, is war, in war is prohibited, and it's prohibited in civilian as well, but unfortunately, as you will see, it's still being used. For example, in the war, okay, and then, you know, if we talked about the World War I, we had the, uh, the chlorine that was used as a gas, okay, that went into trenches and killing people. Then mustard gas for blister agent, hydrogen cyanide for blast agent, meaning that, uh, you know, it affects the blood directly, and also nerve agent. And they use mustard and nerve agent, for example, in Iraq, okay, then uh, on their own civilian, they use the terrorist attack, the sarin attack in Tokyo. In, uh, so these were used directly in, uh, for civilian. Then we're going to look at the more recent, the more recent application of... Uh, thing. If you remember the, what they call the salivary poisoning, okay, where you had the family, the, the daughter, and then the Sergei uh, Pierpont were were in fact what they what happened is that the two apparently that was not necessarily proven uh, exactly so we had they brought a, a bottle of perfume and then they injected it onto the uh, the, the the door door knob okay of, of these people and they were found on the park and therefore they didn't die fortunately these people and these were the Novachik, uh, Novachok, in fact, used for, for, this, uh, for this poisoning. But later on, this, uh, this bottle of perfume was disposed in a, in a garbage can. It was found by someone, by a husband, brought it to home, and then used it on his wife, okay, on the wrist, and the wife died a few months afterwards. And the husband was also affected, but survived. The policeman that went, for example, for care policy was affected as well, but survived okay, from the, these ones. So these are very drastic uh, measures of uh, these chemical agents, but not used in war necessarily now, but used for against civilians. And another one is Navalny, who just died last week, okay, who was poisoned with the Novichok again okay, in 2020, went to Germany, get cured, returned that, was arrested, and then spent his life in prison and was just uh, died, and uh, I would say killed for, for probably in this case. And these are things, but how do you, the, and then also another one is the brother of Kim Jong-un, okay, that was killed in the airport, okay, in Kuala Lumpur, okay, by two ladies, okay, that thought that they were using a prank TV show. Okay, in which they were putting uh, something on his mouth and all that, but it was a nerve agent, and therefore it was VX nerve agent, and he died afterwards. And all these not only affect the, the person that is, uh, is, but also... And then, so what we need really is good proportion personal equipment to protect on that because people going there for example the policemen that went for the cure pole were affected as well because the not the door knob was affected and they touched it and they did not have equipment at that time to because they didn't know that was the problem and so how do we take this material and try to protect to protect people and then we have to make tests of that and this is the purpose of this presentation so, and these are some of the nerve agents. Okay, they're easy. We do, we, we produce them in Canada as well. Not for use them, okay, but to be able to protect against them, to design material to be able to protect against this agent and to, to provide them to military personnel, but also to first responder in case of a problem. And so the way that it's being done, so they make tests. 
So we had a cell in which we put, we have a membrane that we put the polymer is inside here. And so there, there is a liquid on the other side or a sweeping gas that is there. And so we put, normally we want to put the minimum of minimum amount of system. Usually when I do test of membrane of a liquid of some sort, I will flood the membrane. So therefore the top part of it will be flooded and all the parts of the membrane will be associated with the liquid. And therefore there will be migration. And we measure on the other side, okay, the, the, at, as a function of time, the concentration. So therefore we're able to estimate the characteristics of the membrane. But if you want to use less, for example, if you have a VX agent, then you would like only to use few drops of it. And so the question that we're going to ask is that, but if I determine the characteristics of the membrane only using few drops as opposed to a flooded cell, is it the same information that I get? And this is the purpose of this, of this presentation. So what we're interested in is to measure the diffusivity and solubility of the membrane, of the material that we would like to have. And so the question is, do we have the right information if we only use drop patterns as opposed to a flooded cell. And that is the purpose of this simulation that I've done for the, uh, for the, for the Canadian government. And so, the, so what we're going to solve is, we have a membrane, okay? This one here is a, is a, has, a, has a thickness, it has, of course, a radius, and then we have the circular part of it. And depending if there is symmetry or not, we're going to use part of it or totally. Normally, I will solve it in three dimensions, so this is the, the fixed second law of equation of, uh, of diffusion, and therefore I'm going to use it. And this is, you know, I would like to discretize this in finite difference. And this is what we're going to, to discuss. So if we take this equation and then we discretize it in T and the Z, Z direction, in the, the phi direction, and in, in the R direction, in the phi direction, this is for a middle point within that system. And of course, we have a series of boundary conditions that will go with this. In the, for each dimension, we need two boundary conditions. We need the initial condition, which was equal to zero at that time. And in this case, we'll have that Z is equal to zero. Where the liquid will be touching, you'll have equilibrium that will exist between the membrane and the liquid. And at the bottom here, normally the concentration will be very, very equal to zero, almost equal to zero because you have either a sweeping gas that you do the analysis or you have a solvent that will really draw all these molecules out and then keep a very low concentration at the bottom. So this is in the Z direction. In the R direction, you have symmetry in the center. And then you have at the, at the end, you have impermeability of the system. And in the phi direction, normally depending how you, you place your pattern on it, then you can only use you know, one part of it or the, total, the totality of it. And then in my case, I use one quarter for some cases and then the, total, the totality for other cases. So these are the definition of the problem. Now, the first thing that I did, I wanted to have a benchmark to be able to determine that my finite difference scheme okay, was indeed a good one. And of course, I don't have a three-dimensional benchmark, but at least I have one that I can solve in one dimension that is in the Z direction. So the line represents the analytical solution that I can, that I can obtain from solving the, the, this problem in one dimension, in the Z direction, using a separation of variable. And the other one is, is the numerical scheme, and we see that this perfect fit between the two. So therefore, I was confident that it was a good uh, performance, a good model. So now, if we look at how an experiment is done. So now we have at the top, the upstream part of the <laughs> membrane, you, you put a liquid, okay? Either drops or flooded cell or any pattern that you want, and then you let it migrate at, as the time goes. So initially, you have nothing at the outside of the system. And because now you have penetration that will be going on. And as, as a function of time, you're going to establish the steady state, and eventually you have a stationary system. From a single experiment, you can determine permeability, solubility, and the diffusivity. If you take this, uh, the solution, for example, of, the, uh, of the, the, the separation of variables, and then you take only, as a function of time, only the first term will be left, you can determine that the time, what we call the time lag, 
Now, this the extension of this line here up to the time axis is called the time line, is related to the divisibility, the effective divisibility of a system. The permeability is always the product of the solubility times the diffusivity. And of course, the solubility is a concentration that exists inside the membrane relative to the concentration that is outside. And therefore, this is what we're going to use. We use it all the time to be able to determine the diffusivity of this system. So now, with the first, another test that we did is that, does, is it function of the, of the diffusivity of the membrane? For example, 10 to the minus 9 meters square per second and 10 to the minus 12 meters square per second. If I have these two membranes, am I going to have the same correction factors or the same problem, okay, that I'm going to discuss later? And in this case, independent of the diffusivity of the membrane, I will have for a certain percentage of coverage, and this one here is 18%. It will be function of the distance, but not function of the diffusivity. And so that's a very important factor, but it's function of the thickness of the system. That's why I would like to determine this, uh, these values. So the next one here, we talked about the thickness. So now I'm going to change the thickness of, this, of the membrane. This is for one diffusivity, one radius, one concentration, a coverage, a constant coverage of 18%. And this will be a central drop, only a drop in the middle of the difference, but covering 18% of the surface. And of course, when the membrane is very small, it will diffuse very rapidly. And therefore, you have almost whatever you're predicting as diffusivity will be the right diffusivity. But as you increase the thickness of the system, then it's going to have the, the ratio of the effective diffusivity of the system divided by the, the real diffusivity of the membrane will start to go down and it can go down up to 0.55 here and it will start to go back here. But of course, in that section here, we're talking about one centimeter membrane, okay? And of course, when you have protective equipment, it's to start to be too big, so unrealistic. So there is an effect of the thickness that we have to take into consideration. So now let's look at other effects. The other one is the pattern. For example, if I dispose a series of drops okay, on the system, then how does it vary? In this case, the only thing I did was the same pattern in the middle, okay, here, but except that the outside pattern, pattern for, the, for the drops, okay, were a little bit distant. It's almost the same, but except there is a certain demanding where you, what you use as a pattern for distribution of the liquid, it will have some function. Therefore, it was a function of length, it's now a function of pattern of a system. And we're going to see some other patterns here. So therefore, if you, if you look at this, this one here, you have two patterns. One is the drop in the middle, as it's expanding the key of the system, and the other one is a ring around and also an expanding ring for the system, and seeing that this is the percentage coverage. And of course, when you have one, co one, one coverage, a fraction of one, is because you have a flood itself. When you have zero, you have no liquid that has been applied to the membrane. And therefore, we have now almost the same thing for this one, but we see that the, as the coverage fraction is in, is is increasing, it goes to one here. So therefore, it is, it is a function of the percentage coverage, and therefore, we're going to take that into consideration. And this is the uh, graph, okay, where we show now, again, a bit the same thing. This is the percentage coverage, this is for a ring, but for different distance. And of course, for a very thin membrane, we have a perfect representation. And as you increase the, the thickness, then we have more corrections that will need to be applied okay, to be able to retrieve the right value of the diffusivity. Because this is the, the effective diffusivity divided by the diffusivity of the membrane. And we would like to have the real value, like the D of the system, not the effective one, because it depends on, the, on many factors. So therefore, we can do more simulations after that by knowing the, re the real characteristics of the membrane. And so what we did was we took a neural network in which we, we, uh, we have, we know that it's function of the length and therefore because the length we have, we go from uh, you know, 100 microns to about one centimeter, we want to have, we'll take the log of 10, okay, of this one as an input to the neural network. So that's the first one, x1. 
We're going to take the coverage because it's a very important parameters. We did not use inside the model for the moment the pattern because you know it depends. Uh, you know it's how to characterize the pattern into an input. The key it's a little bit uh, prob problematic, but it's not it's not a very strong function of pattern. But it is mostly of coverage and the the, the thickness. So if I do this, if I present now the parity plot, the key of that system, and I did a lot of experiments. We have about 500 experiments in this. The, 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 red, the black points are for pattern number two, which was a center drop that is expanding depending on the thickness of the, the, the diameter of this bulb of liquid. The other one, pattern number three, was a ring. And then, of course, the ring, if you have the thickness of a ring, depending where it will be, then it will have this uh, pattern. And the last pattern was pattern number four, which was the drops, the percentage drop. And of course, all the red points will be fairly low because when you put, you know, only drops into the system, then it, you don't cover that much surface. And we see that the pattern is not a perfect pattern. It's not a perfect uh, draft, except that it gives really a good idea of the correction factors that we will have to have. So as a conclusion, is that we have the D effective over the D of the membrane is function of, of the diffusivity, it's not function of the diffusivity, function of the length, the pattern, and the coverage. If we take the coverage and the length at the same time, we using the model, the neural network model, we're able to calculate the value of D because now we have the DF over D, and then we're able to calculate the correction factor from this from the neural network, okay, that will be giving you. And so this is the purpose of using this to be able to design material and test material that will protect against this agent, VX, that Nova shock, and all that. And so for first responders, we know that how much time they can keep this equipment on before they can, they can start to be affected. Because only the VX agent, for example, like the brother of Kim Jong-un, in 15 minutes, he was dead, okay, because they put on his mouth, okay, this, uh, this, uh, this VX agent, and it, it, pretend, it prevents, okay, all the nerves, okay, the connection in the nerves of the signal to be, and then it just, system just shut down, okay, so it's very, 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 very efficient, more efficient than uh, if you're talking about the efficiency of war, then a, then a nuclear weapon, okay, uh, a bomb, because you just kill people and then you leave all the building uh, there. So I, I'm not for war, okay, although I was a military for many years, okay, but I'm not, uh, I'm not for war, but we have to protect against that he's the use in the civilian. So I would like to thank you for your uh, attention.